Clinical Biology of Health students. My name is Richard Traeger. I am spouse to Dr. Nicole Traeger, and she has asked me to give a talk on cancer, its history, biology, and treatment. So here we go. Who am I and why am I talking to you today? Um, well, I began life thinking that I was going to be a doctor, but in undergrad, I started doing research and never looked back. I have a PhD or a doctorate in drug discovery and biomedical science. I have worked both in academic and industrial labs. I'll give you a few examples in the next slide. And cancer, uh, like it so often does, keeps popping up in my research. I began my career in an academic lab in undergrad at this school called Point Loma Nazarene University. After I did uh, some undergrad research, I moved on to working at a research institute for the Novartis Research Foundation, which was in San Diego. I was programming computers, looking for um, new drugs in the data that they were producing. After that, I went and were, went to graduate school at the Medical University of South Carolina, where I worked in a VA lab and um, kidney health and cancer came up in my research there. After I, after I graduated, I went on to work at a Pfizer research unit um, called Renat. They did a lot of antibody work for immuno-oncology, which is getting the immune system to uh, help fight cancer. Uh, after my position here at Pfizer, I uh, got a job at Genentech, which is also in South San Francisco. It's also an industry lab. And there I'm also um, programming computers to help predict how drugs are going to react in the body. So where am I going with this talk? We're going to talk a little bit about the history and biology of cancer. You should have gotten some of this from Nicole already. Um, then I'm going to cover the treatments, which are basically you either burn the cancer, cut the cancer, or poison the cancer, or some combination of those three things. And then why, why, are you, why should you be interested in cancer research and how is it going? So for the history of cancer, I've cribbed a few things from The Emperor of All Maladies, which is a really great book that I would suggest you uh, read uh, in your own time. It's, it's a very good book. It's sort of a biography of cancer. I really enjoyed it. Cancer the disease has always been with us. Um, the first recorded description of cancer, although it obviously wasn't called that, occurred in G Egypt around 3000 BCE, so long time ago. Cancer has been described in several ancient cultures, including Greek, Roman, and Chinese. I'm sure there are uh, other examples as well. These just happen to be the most prominent examples. The word cancer that we use now uh, comes from the Greek word for crab. It was a comparison of the crab to how veins of the tumor stretched on all sides as the animal the crab has its feet. So it was a, it was a description of how they thought cancer looked um, when they looked at the tumor. Um, I mention all of this um, to emphasize that cancer has always been with us. It is not a new disease. Um, it's not something that all of a sudden sprung up in modern times. It is, it is a disease that we have always had. As for the biology um, of cancer, uh, sort of the normal cycles of life and death for cells are um, represented um, sort of in these cartoons here. So here you have a, a normal cell. It's receiving signals from the outside. It's getting its it's getting survival cues and proliferation cues, right? Uh, 
and it get it gets those signals, it processes them, and it it'll either go on to survive or proliferate. Um, and it's not receiving any signals like, hey, you need to die, hey, you need to not grow anymore. Um, for death, here uh, it stopped receiving survival and proliferation cues, and it is receiving signals saying you need to die, you need to you need to inhibit your growth, and it does so accordingly. It'll either uh, divide, it'll either die, or it will um, not go into cell division. So these are all of the signals that cells can receive and how healthy cells respond when it receives those signals. Uh, cancer cells are quite the, um, quite the cells. They, they're, I'm trying to think of a word that is appropriate for the classroom. They're, they're horrible cells. So they can, they'll, they can receive these signals, death cues, but it, it just ignores them. Just, no, I, I don't care. Um, it will receive um, survival cues and it'll actually produce its own survival cues. So it just tells itself to keep growing. Same for proliferation. Um, the cells around it might, might um, produce the signals to say, hey, stop growing. Um, and it'll ignore those growth inhibition cells. And from that um, whole mess, you'll get these uh, cells that have uncontrolled survival and proliferation. So how do we go about treating this disease? What do we do once those cells start surviving longer and multiplying further than they should? There are three main ways. Um, we either uh, cut the cells out, so surgery. Uh, we either burn the cells, kill the tissue, um, using uh, focused radiation, or we use chemotherapy, we poison the cells. Um, and depending on the cancer, you will use a combination of these three. So say you had a, a solid tumor in your gut, you would um, cut out the tumor as, as well as much as the surgeon could, getting rid of the cancerous tissue but leaving healthy tissue. And then they might suggest, okay, we're going to do focused radiation on where the cancer was to try and kill any remaining cancer cells. And then in addition to that, we're going to use chemotherapy. But if you have a cancer of the blood, you can't cut blood out right like it's, it's it's a liquid so then you have to do um, a combination of either radiation and chemotherapy or just chemotherapy so um, surgery like i mentioned before you re the idea is to uh, remove the cancerous cells from the body that's just the most effective way we have so far so surgery is used to treat many cancers it works best for solid tumors that are contained in one area. This is often used in conjunction with the radiotherapy and chemotherapy, the burn and poison options. And techniques over the years have been developed to take less healthy tissue and the majority of the cancerous tissue. Um, our instrumentation has gotten better, our visualization techniques of being able to see inside the body, um, um, attitudes of uh, how much to take has changed especially with um, breast cancer. Um, uh, surgeons used to, used to be, um, use a technique called radical mastectomy. So they would just take the whole breast and not really care about how that made the patient feel and whether or not it was called for. They're just, you have cancer, everything has to go. So now they've gotten much better at identifying healthy tissue and only removing the cancerous tissue and trying to leave as much of the patient's healthy tissue as possible. Um, burn or radiation, radiotherapy, uh, is a way of using ionizing radiation to control or kill malignant cells. Um, so this is also used in combination with cut if there's a solid tumor and um, poison or chemotherapy. Um, technology has improved 
the guidance and focus of radiation treatment. Um, as mentioned in the, the picture over here, uh, lasers and molds under the legs are used to determine the exact positioning for this radiation therapy of the pelvis. This person probably has um, maybe uterine cancer. So they're um, using these high-tech visualization techniques to focus the radiation in a very specific area so it's not just like a big blast of radiation. And then uh, poison or chemotherapy. Um, chemotherapy is a cancer treatment that uses one or more anti-cancer drugs. Um, chemotherapy started as non-specific cell killing compounds. Um, you know, they started as um, these drugs that were derived from um, the mustard gas used in World War One, and um, and they were, they were just really potent poisons that you would hope to kill the cancer before it killed you. Um, as the research pro has progressed, treatments have become much more specific to each type of cancer. Um, so the drugs have become more sophisticated and they target um, much smaller portions of the cell and cell types. They become targeted to cell types rather than just this is going to kill everything and you hope to survive the cancer. Um, the treatment of cancer has gotten um, more interesting, more complicated, and I sort of outlined it here. Um, this is a rough progression throughout time. Uh, so this drug um, was one of the first chemotherapies. Um, tamoxifen was a drug that came out in the middle of last century. Um, so these are so these are some of those um, chemotherapies and uh, um, cell poisons I was talking about. This antibody is actually a very recent development. Um, I think in the 2000s this came out, and it it only attaches to very specific cells um, that have very specific um, signals on the outside of them, say, um, and it is able to target. Um, just cancerous cells, which is really interesting. Um, and very, very recently, 2010s, in the teens of this, um, of just this last decade, there's this new thing where you can program a cell to actually attack cancer cells. Um, and the way that you do this, um, so killing cancer cells with other cells, is you, um, you can take cells from the patient's body. Um, they're a part of the immune system called T cells, and you can actually program them um, with this fancy protein on the outside of the cell, grow millions of them and reintroduce them back into the patient. And because it has this protein on the outside of this cell for the immune system, it can then attack the cancer cell specifically. So it's an even more sophisticated way of going about going about treating cancer. Um, so there's sort of the outline of how cancer has been cancer is treated, has been treated, and sort of the progression of technology um, and improving both the treatment and the outcomes of cancer. Um, so why study cancer? Why, why care about it if, if we've always had it and it's always this horrible thing? Well, progress is being made. In this, um, in this graph, it's showing five-year cancer survival rates improving in the U.S. Um, from the 70s to the 2000, 2007 through 2013. Um, so you're taking a five-year um, expectancy and saying how many people are uh, surviving five years out from cancer. So the, that survival has gone from 50% of people who get cancer survive five years later to 67 for all, for all types of cancer. And as you can see, um, the majority of these cancers, we have improved the survival of them. The, the unfortunate exceptions are uterine and cervical cancer. Um, but progress is being made. Um, 
and that that is an encouraging thing and sort of one of the reasons that um, I think you should care about cancer research and um, thinking about it, studying it, maybe going into it. Uh, that is the end. I'd usually take questions here, but obviously this is a video time capsule. Hello, hello, the future. Um, I have some references here, some information about uh, carcinogens, um, sort of the references I used to make my slides. Um, here they are in video form. You'll obviously be re receiving these um, in um, slide form. So uh, there it is. I don't know how to end this video, so I'm just going to end it. Thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, I suppose submit them to Dr. Nicole Traeger, and she'll either answer them or ask me.